Transfer student experience. The transfer student experience. The transfer student experience. The transfer student experience. The transfer student experience. I haven't actually spoken to you, so. You have some very interesting work experience, humanitarian work experience, serving in India and Vietnam. I think one thing was also that I think that has formed like my trajectory also is my time in Spain. I took a few classes there. It was sort of through PCC, but it was another program where I took a translations course and then I kind of studied like the relationships between North America and Spain in the context of like a European Union framework and then studied some literature there too, which is like more of like a personal interest, but it all really was like encompassing of my time there. I know now with COVID, people have a lot more free time, which has been a blessing and a curse Mm because you have two camps, the people that have been Netflixing and chilling for the past four months, five months, or the people that have decided to pick up a new hobby or a side project. But I would like to think that we as transfer students have interesting lives outside of Amazon Prime and Netflix and Uber Eats. What are some side projects you're working on? During, I guess, quarantine, like I really got back to like some of my creative outlets. So I started doing more poetry and like singing. So I took up like some online improv stuff. And then I started like just doing my own research on like how creativity and like theater, all of those things, music can be platforms for social change. And I think because of the work that I did before and my like interest in in art, I think um, it was a really interesting time to like merge those two together and just really understand like the impact it has on people. So I really took the time to like see what those experiences, how can they reflect in an artistic lens? So I'm actually thinking of picking up a minor in performance for a social change because I just, I'm so passionate about that like humanity aspect of art that I think it could really be a really useful tool in capturing like those stories that we don't really see. And I think like right now is such a crucial time to do that because like we're just seeing so many things like up front with with the virus with social injustice so i think having that different outlook is essential and so schedules workloads online classes what was the most difficult part of ramping up as a transfer and given that you've had the taste of the college experience before what's one thing that you miss before covid i've always loved the classroom i just i love engaging with people face to face in conversation and like especially in terms of like the humanities, like that's sort of my area of study as well. So I just, I love that idea of like camaraderie in a classroom. So I definitely was missing out on that. And I think my entrance at such a large school, it was definitely kind of, you know, it it was kind of disheartening and like, I don't want to say discouraging because as someone who wants to see setbacks as like, you know, a positive thing, I try to see it as an opportunity to find different ways to engage with other people. But as you know, the reality was that it, it, it's still very different. I definitely miss that aspect of it because I one thing that really got me into like researching USC was that it was like the amount of people and like the diversity. So I wanted to really encounter that face to face. I think that's something that I'm, I'm still trying to like tackle with, but you know, you just have to learn how to evolve. <laughs> For sure. And I think you have sort of those two camps of people, the people that see this as a crisis or an opportunity. So it definitely is an opportunity to learn about, you know, how to live when when stuff is going wrong and, and how to approach your own life. We were definitely given like the time. There's so many things that happened during these past few months, but we've definitely were like, given the time to acknowledge our time in the world and I think what we can do with it. I know that sounds super like expansive, but it's the truth. Like I know those thoughts like went through my head while I was at home and like understanding like, okay, this is like this, this is the situation we're in. Like, what am I going to do for myself to keep my mental health, you know, for others? Um, all of those things were like, you know, puzzling in my mind. That's a chance to step back and take a look at yourself. Indeed. Yeah. What communication challenges are you facing at USC? And what would you wish that TSC as a student organization made more clear for you? when you started? Some challenges for me. I'm very, I'm very old fashioned. Like, I mean, I indulge in social media, of course, like that's our era, but I'm just saying like, I I really enjoy like, you know, meeting up for coffee or talking about those things with other people and like meeting people spontaneously. So I think it's been a challenge for me because everyone has already kind of shifted to that remote environment from like the spring semester. So coming in as like a new transfer student, I have a little bit more of like an eagerness to like 
you know, meet new people and all those things. But some people are really just tuned out. Like they don't want to engage in those conversations. They're very much about, let me just do my work and I'm going to do it like I can to just get through this whole like remote space, right? So I guess in terms of like meeting friends, it's been challenging and like your people, you know, because they say you find your people in college. So I think that's been one challenge, but I have made it a goal of mine to just really research all the different organizations on campus. So for example, I recently joined the Performing Arts Committee. So I'm actually a, a board member of that. Like it just happened like last week. And that was very spontaneous. Like I, I'm just having to apply to see what I, can, what I can do and I got it. So that's something that I'm looking forward to. But I think it's been very much based on individual initiative. And I think that's where I'm really seeing those skills being tested because I don't have like that physical space to like prompt me to do these things. It's really up to me to go out and like seek these connections. And then the second part of the question was about TSC, right? From the meeting that I went to, it was very clear and I think just very genuine about telling us about, you know, that it's hard when you're in such a large school and like you're transferring. So I think on that point, like you nailed it, but I think maybe making it more clear in the reflection of like creating more spaces to talk to people. So maybe like more as opposed to like larger seminars, we can maybe also do like breakout rooms. I don't know, that's just a suggestion, but like just so we can get that sense of like closeness, you know what I mean? But everything else, like I think what you guys talked about when like you're not really sugarcoating it, you're telling it how it is that like it is difficult to be a transfer student in such a large school, but you know, we're here to cultivate this community and really see how that can like take us a long way. What career goals are you sort of aiming towards? I know you touched about the humanitarian but I thought if you could flesh that out a little bit more and is it working for a company? Is it starting your own nonprofit? What plans do you have after graduating? Yeah. So it's definitely at a crossroads right now, especially because I'm entering this price alone has so many different opportunities and I'm, I'm really understanding my place in those. And I think what my goals right now are geared to are definitely staying with the nonprofit sector. I, I want to continue in enriching that part of my work because it's where I started, like after high school, like you mentioned, I went to India with a nonprofit that is super close to me. I still talk to the director. We keep in contact of some projects we can do locally. So it's very, very close to me that I don't want to just, you know, get rid of that. Like it's, it's going to be a part of me forever and whatever projects I end up doing in the future. I think to expand on that, like I mentioned with the whole creative outlet, I definitely want to see how I can bring performance and the idea of creativity to like underserved communities to be able to advocate for themes of sustainability, themes of social equity, all of those things captured in this artistic form. And I think I could really do that with a combination of like the nonprofit skill and like the creative skill. I see myself working, maybe even starting my own nonprofit, I don't know, to combine those two things, you know, I think that'd be really, really fun. Just an interesting project to get all the people that I've met and like really create this project. But I definitely would want some more experience with companies focusing on equity, focusing on sustainability. So I'm able to get more knowledge on those things. And I mean, I definitely haven't heard of that combination, this sort of humanitarian mixed in with like almost production, artistic side. And so I feel like that almost answers my next question but I still wanted to ask it anyway. What value do you think that someone like yourself with your unique background could offer to an organization? I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this as well. So correct me if it's a little bit, you know, meshy, but what I've come to realize after my experiences abroad and all of that, being 17, going to a foreign country by yourself, like that is just, I can remember everything, like the, like all my sensibilities when I got there, I was ready to just give up and be like, what am I doing here? But I was alone and I really, I had to trust myself, you know, and that little specific thing took me all the way to where I am today. And I realized that those little moments where I have with myself, I'm, yeah, I may be like the, on paper, it may be that I have all the same experience as a public policy, another student in price, right? But the way I got here enhances, I think, my role and like what I take from price. We're in the same classes, yes, but what I'm really taking from it is really shaped with what I've learned in India with myself, with the people that I've worked with, that I'm not just going through that normal trajectory. It's that I have this like really weird experience before entering such a big network of USC. What did you feel made you stand out in the application? What's something that you really pushed in your essays? 
my main idea was talking about, I really take in moments as learning opportunities, like to the smallest things, right? To like even taking public transportation for the first time, all of those things. I wrote those in my essays talking about how I would commute to school, to, uh, to like to PCC, how working at a coffee shop was something really cool too. Like all of these different experiences that I've had have formulated a part of my perspective on the world now. So I think a part of my essay really encapsulated that, that aspect of me where I, I'm very curious about the things that I encounter. I ask any of my friends, like I literally journal all the time and I just like, oh, I did, I did this today. Like, as a matter of fact, like I, a goal of mine in life is to publish my like journal that I had in India and Vietnam because I wrote every day and it's filled with like two journals now. It was four months. So every day I just look like, like when I want to, I'm like, oh, I'm going to look back what I did October of 2017. And like I can, and it's very detailed. My curiosity and my focus on detail is very interesting. And like, I just love what I can learn from that. What do you see as the positive of being a transfer student? What's the value? Everyone story is different. STSC makes that very clear, which I love is that there's this like image in society where college has to be one thing for people. And, you know, it's like, you're going to get all the answers in college. And like, that's what I was told when I was little. But I realized that a lot of the answers I got were also from personal experiences. And having a platform like USC makes me so grateful to apply them and like combine them with my curriculum. So I think that's a unique aspect of, of my transfer experience in particular, but as a whole, like everyone brings those different setbacks, those different opportunities to the table when they're entering a curriculum at whatever university it may be, particularly in this case with, with USC, um, with the large network. I think, you know, you hear about that all the time too, but it's very interesting how we can bring a different insight. And so you, you see yourself definitely taking those experiences with you into the future. Indeed. Yeah. And I think for me, I don't see like, this might not make sense, but I don't see USC as like this ultimate like thing. I, I see it as a, I'm, I'm really grateful to be here. You know, like I'm really grateful that I was able to make this decision and that I'm able to accompany it with uh, other experiences in my life. And it, and enrich my trajectory that way. And if you could go back in time to a younger self, a younger Rihanna, and give her one tip, whether it be life advice, transfer advice, what would it be? I think I would tell her to not care what people think, be confident in, in the decisions that you make, and, you know, be bold. I look back when I was younger, I was very like, oh, should I do it? Should I not? I don't know. They're going to say this. I'm, I'm going to go this route. Da, da, da. No, just go. Like, just go for it. Because now that I'm exposed to the world that we live in, like, there's so much competition. But in the end, like, if you look at it, we're all human beings trying to make something of ourselves in this world. So I think being bold in those decisions and whether you know who you are at the time or not, obviously at 16, 17, I didn't really know who I was. I was you know, still really trying to figure all that out. And I still am, but um, just the process. <laughs> and I mean, from other conversations too that I've had with other transfers, mm -hmm. a lot of what they've been saying too is that don't get lost in the specifics. Take time to smell the roses and enjoy the, the view of the journey, you know, because um, yeah. you'll, you'll miss it. Yeah. You'll miss it. And it's, it's funny because what we don't talk about is honestly that feeling once you get into college. Because for me, and I mean, I guess I'm a little bit different in that I'm international as well. And so coming to Are a you new college. No, I'm a senior, super senior. Yeah, I'm just doing, this is my last semester. I'm doing some GEs just to finish off. But I came in as a junior in 2018. But before that, I mean, it was pretty much applying for college was my life, mm -hmm. right? For like a good, I want to say two years because in 2017, I like came to California for a month never been here before, was 20 years old and came for a month, did a whole tour of, of the colleges and everything, Stanford, Berkeley, everything. Mm -hmm. And I actually came and I, I set up meetings with advisors and admission counselors here at USA, which is awesome because it was the only university that, that actually gone that extra mile that I could, I was speaking to professors and like little things like the professors would organize parking for me so that I could get here. Nice. You know, they put me in touch with their secretary to like organize something. And even the fact that the admissions counselor, the international admissions counselor spoke to me. Anyway, so that was my life for about two years because then I was applying, writing essays for nine months. And then when I got in, 
I felt like the dog who had just caught the car. You know, those dogs that chase after cars. What do they do if they actually catch the car, right? <laughs> They're like, what do I actually got what I wanted? What now? So I think people don't talk about that is that they get so ingrained in that end goal. They only see that end goal and they don't see the journey to get there. And that's on uh, why we can sometimes feel that way. Like, oh my God, I actually got what I wanted because you miss out on, on the work that it takes to get there. And that's probably more valuable than, than finishing or getting where you want to go. No, indeed. I mean, if just to chime in real quick, like with COVID, I realized that I was so, I kind of forgot about all of that. Like, you know, you know, tears and sweat that really went into like my work into this. And when I got all these like acceptance letters, I remember this like, like vividly, it was, I think it was, um, in, in April, I like sat down on my couch and I was like smiling and I was like, and I, I started crying. I was like, whoa, like, it hit me because I hadn't really reacted to like my USC admission. I had, I just read the email and I was like, okay, like I'm in, you know, like it was really exciting, but I, I didn't really know how I felt. And it wasn't until that day in April where I sat down and I was like, I started crying because I was like, I'm, I'm finally here. Like this was a goal of mine. And like, this is what I always wanted. So yeah, I think that's just, a, it's a perfect point. Like you really don't see that. And it, it, like, you have to, because you like, you have to capture as a whole, as opposed to like just the end goal. 100%. And I mean, and it's also because the end goal isn't what changes you. Exactly. You don't, you don't grow from achieving the goal. You grow from the work that it takes to get there. You had mentioned that you're from Australia. What made you want to transfer over here? I mean, I'm going to sound cliche, but the American dream, Australia wasn't a place that I could see myself growing financial independence and building something for myself, especially where I want to head. I want to get into more technology. And that's really not an industry that's strong in Australia. Our industries that are strong are primary industries. So agriculture and mining, and I don't want to be a farmer and I don't want to dig rocks out of the ground. So I was like, no, I'm not staying there for that. I knew like that there was the U S existed and that there was this, you know, concept of the American dream, but it wasn't until that trip in 2017 where I was like, yeah, I'm coming here. Like it actually solidified how I felt. For me, it was just more, and I think this this goes for all transfers too, on why they even come to USC, but it was about enlarging my opportunities. Just putting myself in an environment where there were more opportunities. I mean, there's more people here, there's more money here. Even the attitude towards people doing stuff is, is different. We have a thing called tall poppy syndrome in Australia, which is essentially the tall flower, the flower that sticks out gets cut down. And so there's a lot of envy in terms of, especially in business, when someone goes out and tries to do their own thing or tries to be different. And I feel like that sort of stuff is supported in the US. Yeah, I never heard of that. Yeah. So that's sort of predominantly why I came here was just more opportunities and, and just, I wanted to be uncomfortable. I was comfortable living at home. I was comfortable living with my parents. It, it was, I was familiar. The way that I see it, I've got one life. Why would I want to live a life that someone's already lived? You know, cookie cutter life of growing up in your hometown and, and working in your hometown and never leaving and getting married to someone that's in your hometown. It's just like that sort of stuff just turns me off. And so I really just wanted to put myself somewhere new, somewhere that do something that no one's ever done before. I'm about being unique. So for me, it was like, I want to be uncomfortable. I want to figure things out. I want to live by myself. So I guess that gives a bit of a, an insight into why I came. That's exactly how I felt with India. Like people were telling me, what are you doing? Like, why do you want to go there? I'm like, something about it is just making me very interested in it. And I'm not going to ignore that. So I think it, it, trusting your instinct is how would you, I, I don't want to use like, use like a number scale, but how would you describe your overall experience with, with, with USC? Like someone like as me, who's coming in fresh, like, how would you describe as a whole your experience, bad and good? I will talk to the on-campus part. I'm very independent. I'll preface it with that. Not everything's going to be served to you on a silver platter. There are a lot of resources, which is great, but you can definitely get analysis paralysis. There's just way too many resources. And so you have to have the gumption and the assertiveness to go out and find the resources that resonate with you. Rarely would someone like me send you an email and say, hey, Ariana, here's a great resource that I think you should check out, which again is why TSC is valuable because we sort of act as that filter. But in coming here, there was a lot of assertiveness that I had to do, especially being an international transfer student. There was visa issues that I had to sort out, meal plan issues that I had to sort out, apartment issues, roommate issues. 
being in a new city, if I had to rate it on a scale, there'd be different scales, right? In terms of being nice, it'd definitely probably be like a, a six. But on a scale of how much I've grown from that, a 10. Like if you had to ask me, would you have rather stayed in Australia or come to the US? I would have said come to the US. I've learned more from being independent and living alone than I have necessarily gone to college. Because the education I'm getting here is quite frankly the same that I was getting in, in Melbourne. I'm going to be honest, I was getting a better education back home. I was, I was doing a double degree in business and engineering. And now I'm just doing engineering. But what I've learned living away from my family and being by myself. And like I said, like the process of getting there, that's, that's how I grew. I can't rate it on one scale, like a Yelp review for my life. But in terms of USC specifically, I'll probably give it a hard eight out of 10. And then in terms of but just the sheer amount that I've grown from coming here, priceless. Can't put a number on it. Appreciate the time that you took to speak with me today. Yeah, the transfer student experience.